Hello everyone, good morning, good evening, and welcome to this Accelerator Tech Talk about getting started with Accelerator Studio. My name is Ricardo Alcocer, and I am the Director of Developer Relations and Training at Accelerator. And with me today is Alan Leard, Lead Solutions Architect for Accelerator. Hi, Alan. Hey, Ricardo, how are you today? Doing well. Are you ready for this? So let's uh, uh, do a, a little bit of a, um, housekeeping first. Um, this is going to be a high-level conversation. Uh, we're not going to get too technical in uh, programming or anything, but, but we will be showing live examples. Uh, I think that the main goal of this conversation is to, um, to show uh, how to use Accelerator Studio and how it compares to um, to Titanium Studio in case you are uh, an existing developer. I just want to make sure first that you guys can see my screen. Um, uh, if someone could comment on on the Crowdcast, make sure that everything is, is fine. Alan, can you see the screen? Um, all right, are you on the Crowdcast? Because I, I'm trying to look at it on the uh, on a secondary device, and I can't see my screen. So if anyone can hear this. Yeah, I see your image. I don't see your screen. All right. Yeah, I don't know, Ricardo, if you're actually sharing your screen. OK, I think, there we go. I think that's better. All right, sorry about that. Um, OK, so as I was saying, this is going to be a high-level conversation on how to use Accelerator Studio. For those of you who are existing um, Titanium developers, Accelerator Studio offers a host of new features that are, were not previously available to Titanium developers. And Alan is going to show us some of those features. It offers a very deep integration with the whole development cycle and also with all the our new products like ArrowDB and Arrow Cloud, they are all deeply integrated into the user experience uh, in Studio. So um, uh, I also see that there's a number of questions on the Crowdcast, and some of those questions um, are better to be asked on the Q&A that, uh, that our new Q&A over at community.accelerator.com. Uh, some of them are actually already answered there. Uh, if there's questions about pricing, you could go to Accelerator.com and go to the pricing tab. Um, as far as the invites, we are releasing invites uh, in badges of uh, uh, over 1,000 users per day. So if you don't have your invite so far, please uh, hand tight. Uh, you're going to receive it soon. Um, so uh, so with that, uh, let me show you. This is Alan. Um, so with that, I'm going to transfer control over to Alan. Uh, so we can share his screen and show you all the Serial Studio uh, goodies. Let me. Okay, you should be on. Great. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm a solution architect at Accelerator, and today we're going to be going over an introduction to Accelerator Studio. Uh, we've released, uh, or we're releasing um, after the invite, a new version of Accelerator Studio along with the 4.0 platform. And so that's what I'll be covering today to give you uh, an introduction to uh, what you'll be getting when you get your invite and uh, start with the new Accelerator platform. Uh, in order to download the new Accelerator uh, Studio in, uh, environment, the IDE, you're going to be logged into platform.accelerator.com. Uh, when you first log in, you'll be redirected to the tools section. You'll see a screen similar to this. It says, Welcome to Accelerator. And you'll see that um, we focused on not only using the Accelerator um, IDE, but we also give you instructions to get started with the CLI, uh, as well as importing your Titanium and your ACS applications. So you can capture all of that here. For today, we're just going to take a look at um, starting with Accelerator Studio. So if we click here, it'll bring us to the download page. And you'll see we have options for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and you can basically just grab the 32-bit, um, the 64-bit installer and download that. 
Uh, we've done a lot of work recently to ensure that the download and installation process is as seamless as possible. So we've actually included a lot of uh, tools that we previously relied on your system to have. Um, now we install those as a part of the install process. So the install should be um, much smoother and more seamless for both Mac and uh, Windows users. Um, in case you're interested in finding out exactly what the requirements are, you can take a look at the uh, Setting Up Studio page, which is in our documentation. Um, we'll post that link for everybody as well. And there is element. So you can take a look at that here. So we launch the DMG and install, and you should be good to get started. So, so once we have um, Accelerator Studio downloaded and installed, um, when you first the Studio, you're going to be prompted to log in with your Accelerator uh, login. Once you've done that, you're going to see the new Accelerator Studio with the new dashboard. And that's what we're looking at here. We've changed the dashboard to make it uh, a much more usable dashboard so that when you first launch Accelerator Studio, you're presented with a number of resources that will um, help you get started. Uh, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, we have create a new project and import an existing project. And then we also do a system check and get uh, Xcode and um, Android installed, as well as mobile web. And if you're on uh, Windows environment up and running, uh, if you don't already have those, you'll be prompted here and be able to uh, walk through the process to install Xcode or the Android SDK. Uh, usually, I prefer to have them installed in advance. Um, and then when you launch Accelerator Studio, it'll already show that the, uh, the environments are up and running. Down below, we've added some additional resources. So you can see here we have uh, Get Started Quickly with Sample Apps. We have our Employee Directory app and the Movies app. There's also the Geocoder app and the RSS feed, and you can click right here to import those projects. You'll see I've already got the Employee Directory and the Movies app uh, imported, so we can do that real time today. And then on the right, we have our latest from Accelerator University. Uh, first video here, you'll see is Introduction to Arrow, which we're going to touch on today as well. So we've integrated those environments. So you can see if I click here, it's actually going to launch the Arrow video right inside of my studio environment. So you leave Studio in order to access the resource to, uh, to get started. Besides that, we also included our global navigation bar up at the top. So you can have access to uh, modifying your profile or downloads, manage your billing for your account, uh, as well as clicking on the drop down here to go and access a lot more resources outside uh, in the Accelerator community. So what we're going to do next is uh, do a quick overview of some of the other tools in the Accelerator IDE outside of the dashboard to make sure that you're aware of where everything is in Accelerator Studio. Across the top, you have your standard uh, options, things like file, edit, source. Uh, important ones to note is you have file and then new, where you can start a new Arrow project, mobile app project, or mobile module project. Um, some of the other ones that are helpful are things like window, where you can say show view and add, say, app explorer which is another view to view individual applications. Inside of the Studio environment, in the upper left-hand options for running your application. So you can click Run to just run on the simulator, or you can choose to debug, profile, uh, run for automated testing, or package your application for deployment. And then next to that, you have a drop-down for all of your different options running on device, on emulator, simulator, or publishing into your iTunes environment to do an iTunes sync. Moving across the top, we have our uh, Live View button. If you haven't used Live View before, that's an Accelerator Studio uh, feature that allows you to, once you launch your application, every time you save a file, it'll automatically update your environment uh, on the simulator. So you don't have to relaunch the simulator every time, which can save a significant amount of time on the uh, build process. Next, we have the Accelerator dashboard link, so you can reopen that if you need it access to open up terminal if you need it, and then to be able to navigate through your tabs. So you'll notice that we've um, significantly decreased the number of uh, buttons that are available in Studio to just simplify the experience and really give you exactly what you need. Moving forward, um, I want to go ahead and um, create a new mobile application so you can see what that looks like in Studio. So we have two options to do that. We can either click here in the dashboard, or we can in this case, we'll click on New Project here in the dashboard. And you'll see that I get the option to create an Alloy project. I'll click Next. We'll give it a name, test app, and an ID, com.accelerator. 
uh, just test. You'll see here I'm running with the 4.0 um, release candidate. And then my deployment targets, Android, iPad, iPhone, and mobile web. Um, in case you're new to Accelerator, keep in mind that Accelerator Studio and Accelerator um, as a whole is a mobile application cross-platform development uh, tool. So you're able to build applications for Android, iPhone, and mobile web, uh, as well as Windows, in one single code base and one application. So you'll see here you have your deployment targets. You can set those now. You can also change them later, and I'll show you that. New to the Accelerator platform, you'll see down below Accelerator platform services. The available services, depending on the level of your um, subscription, are going to be cloud, which is our AeroDB, um, test, which is automated testing, performance management to uh, manage the performance of your application once it's deployed, be notified when there's crashes or handled exceptions, and then analytics. Your default uh, subscription, if you're an um, uh, individual user or team user, is going to be cloud and analytics. And we'll enable those for you on every mobile application unless you uncheck this box. So we'll go ahead and click Finish. And that's going to go ahead and create the new application. When that's finished, we'll have it appear in our Project Explorer in Accelerator Studio. So during this process, we're actually reaching out to the Accelerator Cloud and enabling your services. So that means that we're creating an app key for your AeroDB Cloud. Um, we're also setting up your application so that analytics are turned on, as well as um, performance management and uh, test if you have those enabled in your account. Hopefully, this will get completed here. There we go. OK, and once that's completed, we're going to open up the uh, type XML file uh, in the GUI view. And so we're going to see that we have our app ID version, all the information for our application, as well as the SDK that we're using, um, and then the deployment targets, which we can go ahead and modify here if we needed to. And you can see that all of my services have automatically been enabled, and we're in my org. So, um, and then above here, we have the modules that have automatically been installed to enable all of those services. From here, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Live View icon, and we're going to run the application. So this will be the first time that we're running an application in Studio. Um, remember that we have the options to run on Android or on iOS or build it to mobile web. And if we were running on Windows, we could run uh, to Windows as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose 5S Simulator and run that. So by selecting it, it usually will run automatically. Um, if you've already got the simulator running and you need to run again, then you can um, click on the Run button. Or you can select the type of run that you want to do, where you can debug, profile, or test. So you'll see your uh, is um, outputting information about the build process. Right now, we're invoking the Xcode build. And in a moment, our simulator will launch, and we'll have built our first application. And you can see that there was only just a few steps to import an application or start a new application, uh, click Run, and actually build the application on um, our environment. Keep in mind that when we're running with Live View, um, we're installing an application that then is going to have um, a local uh, server running that um, you need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. And you can run Live View both on your device and on your simulator. Um, and it allows you to make changes to your application in real time. And every time you save a file, it'll automatically uh, update your application. So while we're waiting for the first deploy, usually you'll find that the first deploy takes a little bit longer. Um, after you've deployed the first time, if you need to rebuild, it'll build um, much faster. But while we're waiting for that to come up, I'm going to go ahead and open up the application. And let's take a quick look at the directory structure of the application. So here on the left, we have test app. And you'll see this is an Alloy application that has um, app um, and then a couple of other folders, make app touch testable, modules, platform, plugins, and then our type XML file, as well as um, manifest and our license files. The most important section is going to be your app directory. As an LA application, that's where you're going to do all of your programming. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up and see if that launched. Ah, there we go. There's our Hello World application. Um, 
So in our test application, if we look in the app directory, we can expand our views and see our one index view. And we'll go and open that in the editor. And we can see here it says, hello world. So if we take a look here, hello world, hello world, we can change that to accelerator and then save that. And you'll see it's reloading um, over on the left. And there you go. It reloaded and shows all right here. Um, there was a much faster time for it to reload after I saved the file. Um, and that can be extremely useful when you're prototyping your application or originally building your application um, to have a really fast rebuild rather than having to recompile the application every time you want to see your changes. So that's Live View. And you do need to make sure that you've clicked Live View um, at the top before you build the application. And then if you want to actually build the application and have it not rely on um, the Live View server, you want to make sure you turn that off and then rebuild again. OK, so we've built an application. Now if we go back to our dashboard, um, we may want to import a sample application to get started on um, some more complex applications or see some examples. So if you clicked on imp uh, Import Project, that would import the Employee Directory application. Uh, if we say Employee Directory 2 and finish, it would import the Employee Directory application. I already have that application uh, imported. So if we click here, I'm going to switch over to App Viewer, which is um, one of the tabs I opened um, when I was customizing my environment. Uh, and we can switch to Employee Directory. And you'll see here we get um, a nice view of just the Employee Directory app. And we can search within the application um, to look for a particular piece of code or something else that um, search the app. And so within the Employee Directory application, uh, if you haven't already seen it, it's a simple directory app that um, allows you to quickly build a application for a directory of people um, where you can have favorites and you can make phone calls. So one app, you'll have it running here. And in this case, um, we're going to go ahead iPhone 5, um, and we'll do, uh, do it without Live View. So we'll click Run. While that's running, we can take a look at it. Um, I've already built it on our JennyMotion emulator. Um, you can use the native Google emulator, um, but I find that the JennyMotion emulator that's available is significantly faster. So you may want to take a look at JennyMotion and use that for your Android emulator. It'll help um, really speed up your emulator launch process, and it's um, significantly more reliable than the, the standard emulators. So this is the Employee Directory app on Android. You can see if we click on a user, um, we're going to click in and see their detail page. We can make phone calls. Um, we can also remove or add to the bookmarks. So if we add him to bookmarks and go back, we'll then see in our bookmarks page, we'll see, um, oops, I think I just removed him. Add him to bookmarks and go back. And we'll see that he's now added to our bookmarks. And we can see him there. So this is the app running on uh, Android. And we're building it for iOS right now, so that should be done in a little bit. Um, and so this is a single code base where there's a very high level of code reuse. If we take a look at some of these files, we can look at the index.xml. And um, we can see that in the, at the top level, we've done some modifications for mobile web. So we give a unique experience for each platform. But then if we go into uh, the directory XML, for example, we have a pretty high level of code reuse across all the platforms. And this is an application that you can download and import directly from Accelerator Studio, both uh, with the current studio as well as the, the new studio environment. So there's the application uh, building on iOS. And now we have them side by side. OK, so, so moving on to some of the other integrations that we have in Accelerator Studio, one of the new ones that I'm really excited about is uh, with our new Arrow product, which is our uh, API product for rapidly building and deploying and managing APIs. We've integrated that into the environment as well. So if I go to File and New and then Arrow Project, I'm prompted with an option to add a new Arrow project. And I can just say Test API. And finish. That's going to generate a new Arrow product, uh, the Arrow or Arrow project. The Arrow project is going to be uh, basically a Node 
project that allows you to manage your APIs and integrate really quickly with your mobile applications. You can connect to a whole slew of backend connectors, um, things like Salesforce or um, MongoDB, Postgres backend, or uh, MySQL database, as well of, um, as, of course, the AeroDB backend, which is the accelerator cloud. That new project's created. It'll be dropped in your uh, directory for your projects. And you can actually run the project locally right here within Accelerator Studio, which will then present you with the, uh, the web application to manage. While we're waiting, Ricardo, was there any questions um, that we should address uh, around no. Studio so far? No, no, that I can see here. Uh, uh, so yeah, you, you can. Carry on. Actually, I, I, in, when you have a chance, could you also show that Accelerator Studio has a, a deep, an integrated debugger? I, I don't think we should go into too much detail, just but just to let people know that there's integrated debugging as well. You were breaking up just a little bit, but um, you were talking about just showing the debugging. Yeah, no, yeah. Don't don't necessarily go through the process, but show that people can. Uh, uh, add breakpoints to the code and, and things like that that are standard on um, uh, IDEs. Yeah, sure. So um, as Ricardo mentions, we have debugging and profiling, um, both of which will help you um, either debug or profile your application. Um, debugging allows you to add breakpoints to the application. Um, when you're in debugging in the debugging view, um, you can double click on the side on the line in which you want to add a breakpoint. Um, and you can also drill down into um, any particular screen that you're on and find out what elements are currently loaded. Um, and then profiling has an option to, to evaluate your application and find out how long it's taking to run any particular function. So you may have a method that's taking, say, 20 seconds when your app is um, having a really long loading screen. And you may not be aware of which one it is. So you click on it, you're going to see there's this one method that's taking 20 seconds or probably more like five seconds, um, that you can actually see exactly how long each method is taking to, uh, to process. So um, if we look back at Arrow that we just created a project, we'll see that we have the Arrow project on the left. Um, our Arrow projects are broken down by APIs, blocks, configuration. Application. See by the model, they got JSON, which is your config configuration file for your Arrow project. Um, but the great thing is, is that from right here, after I just created a brand new project, I can go up here and you'll see it says run local Arrow server. So I can click on run, and we'll see down in the console down below, we're now going to build and deploy um, a local Arrow server. And you can see what's going on in the console. We're actually grabbing the connectors for AeroDB and um, the composite connector. And then we're going to actually launch that. And we'll launch it in Studio, but it's going to launch on a local host, so you can go out and view that in a web browser as well. Um, and you'll see that we have some built-in documentation that's available product. So uh, here it is. Here's the Arrow documentation that's automatically launched from it. If we click on API docs, you'll see that we have an overview. And then if we look at APIs, we have our test API and test user that got um, created as part of our brand new and then we have our models. So we automatically brought in our uh, AeroDB models. And then we have our test user model, which is the model that was um, provided as an example. So here you have first name, last name, and email. And I'm not going to get into Arrow too much, because there is a, uh, a separate video to talk about Arrow available in Arrow University. But I think one nice thing is that right from um, my interface inside of Studio, I can click on Data. And I can manage my data. So I can come here, and I can say, Add a new user. And just put an Allen Laird Laird at Accelerate. And click Save. And that's going to go out and actually add a user to my cloud environment. So, and a quick note on that there's another video that's pretty neat where you can watch um, how to take the employee directory application, import that into Studio, and then create a Arrow project and wire the employee directory app to the Arrow project in a very short amount of time. It's a good demonstration of the use of Arrow uh, as a product um, to integrate with your mobile applications. 
So um, now we've got the Arrow project running. Uh, I wanted to also point out that as well as creating native iOS and Android uh, and Windows and mobile web options, uh, server-side node applications using the new Arrow product, uh, you can also create native um, modules for iOS and Android. If you go to new and you go to mobile module project, you'll be prompted with an option to create an Android iOS or mobile web module. And I've already done that here as well. So if I expand my iOS module project, we can take a look at that. And you can see that uh, by default, we create um, an example application that has built-in classes for you of your iOS uh, classes that you can go in and start modifying. And then you can actually package the module right from here and deploy it directly into another application. So we have really great integration across all of our different product lines, uh, from building native mobile applications to building native uh, modules to enhance those applications to building your server-side product on the back end and integrate with your back end data. Um, we've done um, a lot of work to try to integrate Studio across all those tool sets and make the Studio environment as clean as possible with as many resources as possible. So, at this point, um, I think we can stop and address any other questions that we might have. Um, I'm happy to, to answer any questions about the studio environment and uh, anything we've gone over today. So, Ricardo, do you have any items that are coming up in the chat we should address? Um, let's, let's give uh, the users a couple of seconds. Uh, if, they, if, if you guys have any questions, make sure to add them to the chat area in the Crowdcast. Um, one thing that I wanted to also uh, highlight is that uh, if, if people have used Titanium Studio before, they can see that now the user interface is much cleaner and it has like a much more modern uh, feel to it. And that's a, that's a great job that the studio team did in, uh, in terms of getting this to be like more modern and up to the, uh, to the tendencies of the market right now. And something else is that uh, part of the deep integration that uh, studio has is that it, it integrates with the whole publishing process of the apps as well because uh, everything is integrated and, and when you have your app ready and you want to deploy it to iTunes or Google Play, you do that from studio. So you don't have to do uh, other than the, the, the things that Apple and Google require you to do as far as the, the metadata of the app for the stores, all the publishing process is actually part of the, of the integrated experience within studio. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think that you know, being able to de deploy directly from Epsilon Studio for the iTunes Store, you can see here we walk you through um, building your application and making sure you have the right certificates and profiles available. Um, and same thing with uh, building for Android. We even prompt you and helped you create um, your Android key store. So you can see here, you can just select your distribution location. If you don't have a key store, you can click on New, and it'll bring up the option to create your key store. Um, which is another um, really handy tool that's that's built into Studio. Um, so, but yeah, I think that it's it's a really great environment to be able to work with. And keep in mind that this is an Eclipse environment. So, if you've got Eclipse tools um, or plugins that you want to use, you can absolutely do that. Um, over under Help, you'll see that not only do we have the option to check for Accelerator updates, but you can also check for regular um, other in, uh, software updates or install new software. So if you click here, um, you can go ahead and add additional software sites and install any other plugins that you might be used to. Uh, a good example of that is, by default, we include um, source control uh, for GitHub. So you can see if I go, let's see, we'll go to the project here. If I go and I click on my gears under App Explorer, um, I, automatically, oops, I automatically have my option for GitHub. And so you'll see uh, initialize GitHub repository. And then once you're initialized, you can commit, push, and pull directly from here, as well as manage your branches. So by default for GitHub, and then you can always go in and install the other plugins for um, SVN or any of the other products that you might be using for source control. So there's a lot of built-in tools that um, are come standard packaged with Accelerator Studio. That um, We have other videos that go into details about how to use debugging, how to use profiling. Um, and so I would encourage you to explore Accelerator University and take a look at that. I think one other note is, like I mentioned, we have these links at the top here. Uh, Accelerator University is available right here as well if you wanted to go directly to the full screen of that. Um, you can also go to your dashboard. Um, and your dashboard is your cloud environment that hosts 
your analytics, as well as your other um, uh, cloud-based tools. So right here, you can see immediately, I can click on Dashboard, and I'm logged into my environment. I can see the directory app and the test app running as active sessions. Um, and then we can navigate through the different apps um, as both Arrow apps as well as uh, native apps. So all of that's available right from your navigation that's included inside of Studio. Um, you can always go to these outside of Studio if you go to platform.accelerator.com. But we try to bring all of the experience into a single unified environment for you and make it so that you really don't have to leave Accelerator Studio to get from creating an application to creating the server that's maybe hosting it to deploying it to your app stores or deploying it to mobile web. Yeah, another important point about, uh, Absolver, uh, about the Q new Q&A community that Accelerator.com is that we have an app view area, and this video is going to be up on app view. So uh, once we upload the video, and even before we upload it, you, we can continue the conversation about this particular topic back in the in community.accelerator.com in case you didn't, um, you didn't get the answer to any of your questions right now. We can go back there and then continue the conversation and, and make sure that all uh, your questions are properly answered. Um, uh, any uh, so there's there's a comment here. I, I have I, I really have not experienced this, but uh, there's someone um, saying that at some point LiveView got stuck in uh, in the middle of a compilation process and uh, they had to restart it. Any any tips on? On uh, I don't know if this is something that that has happened to you before, but uh, um, any tips on how to uh, properly use Live View? <laughs> Excuse me. One thing to note with Live View is that Live View is um, currently you can use it with uh, one platform at a time. So although you can always deploy it to um, a device that's not even connected to your computer, you can do that on iOS or Android. But currently, we limit that to one platform or the other at one time. So you can't do both. So you always want to make sure if you're trying to run it on uh, iOS, you want to stop it on Android or if you're, vice versa. Just basically stop the emulator. Um, otherwise, you'll get a red screen that'll tell you that, um, that LiveView is no longer available. Um, and if at some point you have uh, an issue, um, if you've been building on LiveView for a fairly long amount of time, if you start to see some issue where it's not compiling or it's not refreshing, um, just go back to your application, um, and let me get back here. If you go back to run, and just re-click, uh, make sure that uh, Live View's um, clicked, and then just rerun the application, and that'll refresh the environment. So that usually will uh, fix any, any hiccups that you may run into, just recompiling it with Live View turned on, um, which you shouldn't have to do once you get into um, developing your application. You shouldn't have to do that very often. You should build it once, and then you can rapidly modify your application and LiveView will represent the changes. But if you do get a hiccup, just rerun it with LiveView turned on, and that usually will reset the environment pretty well. That's great. Uh, I see also pricing questions. Please uh, uh, feel free to send an email. At, actually, if you scroll up on the, on the chat, uh, you'll see an email for Kyle Novak, K-N-O-V-A-K, uh, at accelerator.com, and uh, uh, he could answer any pricing questions that you may have. Um, yeah, and keep in mind that if you go to our, our front end website and you click on pricing, um, there's an option to compare plans, and that usually answers a lot of the questions. It'll break down um, all of the different features that are available for our indie plan um, all the way through to our enterprise plan. So you can view that, and if you have further questions, of course, you can uh, email us. But we've tried to cover as much as we could on what's covered under each pricing model. Um, on our website, but a lot of people will just miss that they can click on the compare plans. So if you click on compare, it answers a lot of those questions for you. Yeah, I, I also see comments here about uh, compile time uh, on, uh, on large apps with many modules and such. Um, a question that, uh, that that maybe we need to address is how uh, Live View works as far as what is pushed to the device. Are, are only the changes being pushed uh, to the device when, when, when you're working on a large app? that uh, then the build time will be uh, greatly improved by, by the user? Yeah, I mean, you know, compiling a large project with lots of modules is going to take a while. And that was the whole intention of LiveView, was that once the project's compiled, um, we can recognize what has changed within that project and just inject those changes and then relaunch the application. And that's one thing that you will notice with LiveView is that um, we do still relaunch the application, but it's um, almost instant, usually. Um, 
whereas um, recompiling can can take a long time, especially if you have a really so live view was specifically a use case where I have a large project. It's going to take a while to compile. So once I've done it the first time, if I've got live view turned on, I don't need to recompile. I'm only making changes, and as soon as I save any particular file, those changes will be displayed in the application. And you'll find that usually the rebuild or the relaunch time is is nearly instantaneous. Um, so um, we're basically just looking for the changes that are made in your project and then injecting those into the um, the final source code. So it's a it's a pretty magical tool if you're if you're working on a large project and you've been having to recompile every time you want to see your changes. Um, we've had clients that have been using Live View for in Accelerator Studio for a while now that um, will say that it saved them you know tens of hours per week in, in recompiling their application. So it's definitely um, a helpful tool to have, especially when you're iterating quickly on your project. And it's not only UI; it's even if, if you make changes to to actual controllers and and, and such. Uh, it will work with that as well, right? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that we decided to still have it relaunch the application is that way we can take into account any uh, logic changes to make sure that we've captured any change to, say, global variables or anything like that. Um, however, the one thing you do need to be aware of is, is that if you're installing new assets into your project, like if you add a new module or if you add a new image to your project, you'll usually need to rebuild the project. Um, we don't necessarily inject new image assets or new modules. So that would be a time that you'd want to rebuild using, um, using Live View. Great. Um, all right, so I'm going to switch screens right now so, because I want to share with, uh, with the audience a couple of useful links uh, about this talk. And then uh, we can continue. Uh, feel free, uh, everyone, to go to community.accelerator.com and, um, and uh, uh, look for the app use section. And then we can uh, have continued this uh, question and answer sessions over there because I'm, I'm sure that uh, it is a lot to, a, a lot to digest. Uh, um, um, if you have never seen a studio before, so uh, feel free to do that. So um, I'm sharing my screen right now. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, we have the link to setting up studio. That is a, is a guide about setting it up. Uh, the download link to studio, the documentation site, and this is, and I also have the link, something that Alan uh, uh, Ricardo, I don't think we're actually seeing your screen. We just see your um, avatar. Try to do that again. Entire screen. Share. I see while, while you're doing that, I see there was a question about doing um, continued integration, continuous integration. Um, keep in mind that Accelerator Studio, we also have um, a very robust CLI. So if you want to do continuous integration, um, all your applications can be uh, built and deployed using CLI. Um, and then uh, as far as unit testing, um, there's a product out there called TimeOka um, where that you can integrate into your application. And uh, TimeOka will allow you to do uh, integration test, I'm sorry, uh, unit testing within your application. Um, and then you can also, of course, um, do unit testing in Aero as well um, using a pro you know, tools like Mocha. So, um, those are both available, and there's other uh, resources out there that we can point to um, in regards to unit testing. Uh, it sounds like I've got two plus ones there for unit testing. Maybe that's a, a future tech talk we can take a look at. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm sure that there's also um, there's going to be uh, very soon videos about on AppView on how to how to work with um, uh, continuous integration and, and things like that. So. Um, so yeah, I, I, I can now confirm that that, uh, that the video is showing my screen. So these are the links. And the last one on the bottom, that's the one that uh, Alan mentioned about a video that shows you how to take the corporate app and uh, tie it to an Arrow backend. It's, it's a really interesting video. There was a question uh, about adding uh, logging to the, um, to the corporate directory app. That's something that is, is uh, it's an interesting topic for a future talk, so uh, I'll make sure that I pass that message along and see if we can do a demo on that as well. All right, so um, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Alan, for, uh, for your time and for the excellent presentation. And this video is going to be available on AppU shortly. Uh, so uh, let's keep the conversation open. Great. Thanks, Ricardo.
All right.